You're listening to the Philosopher's Note on Mastery. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to the Philosopher's Notes on Mastery, The Keys to Success and Long-Term Fulfillment by George Leonard. We'll start with a quote from George Leonard. We fail to realize that mastery is not about perfection. It's about a process, a journey. The master is the one who stays on the path day after day, year after year. The master is the one who is willing to try and fail and try again for as long as he or she lives. End quote. Mastery. If we have any desire to live at our highest potential, we must master the concept of mastery. And George Leonard, a lifelong learner, educator, teacher, author, and Aikido master, is our ideal teacher. This book is packed with simple, profound truths aimed at helping us reorient ourselves from ineffective dabbler, obsessive, and hacker approaches to life to one of mastery. Life's too short for anything other than our best. Wouldn't you agree? So my vote, let's dedicate our lives to a path of mastery, starting now. We'll go ahead and make that start with our first big idea in this note, dabbler, obsessive, and hacker. Quote, we all aspire to mastery, but the path is always long and sometimes rocky, and it promises no quick payoff. So we look for other paths, each of which attracts a different person, end quote. And those three other paths are the dabbler, the obsessive, and the hacker. Let's take a quick look at them. The dabbler. This person gets really into something for a while and loves the quick results, but the moment things fade, he or she's off to the next new thing, rationalizing that it just wasn't a good fit. Hence, no mastery. The second person or approach is the obsessive. This is a bottom line type of a person who wants to get the tennis stroke right on the first lesson, and when results start to slow, pushes even harder to make it work, ignoring the fact that plateaus are part of the mastery, pushing and pushing mercilessly to create a continuing upward curve, then a sharp, sharp decline, hence no mastery. And the third approach is the hacker. After sort of getting the hang of something, the hacker is content to stay at a plateau, never really improving his skills beyond the first basic level. Hacking, hacking, hacking. Hence, no mastery. You can find these three alternatives in work, sport, and relationships. Where do you show up? Can you think of some examples of how you may have shown up as a dabbler, obsessive, or hacker in your life? Maybe in your career, in your hobbies, in your relationships? In my own experience, in my own non-mastery detours, I've mastered the dabbler persona. Like in my hobbies of tennis, golf, martial arts, yoga, triathlon, drawing, etc. Um, also in my relationships or creative projects. I'm all about it until the initial buzz wears off and the work begins. How about you? What persona do you embody in your non-mastery times? <clears throat> As you think about that, let's move into the next big idea, diligence. Quote, how do you best move toward mastery? To put it simply, you practice diligently, but you practice primarily for the sake of the practice itself. End quote. So for the rest of my life, every time I hear the word diligently, I will hear the voice of my Vipassana meditation teacher. Now, I don't remember exactly how many times during my 10-day silent meditation class he said those words, but uh, it was a lot. As he guided us through our arduous practice, the 10 days was hands down the hardest thing I've ever done. Imagine, no talking, no eye contact, no computers, no journal, nothing but 10 hours of meditation for 10 days, right? Okay, so as he'd guide us through that, he'd say in his beautiful Burmese accent, work diligently, diligently, work patiently and persistently, patiently and persistently. And you're bound to be successful, bound to be successful again and again and again. He'd repeat these beautiful rhythmic words. And I experienced many deep insights during the 10 days. This idea of embracing diligence, patience, and persistence was certainly one of the most powerful. It's amazing how impatient we can get. I know I've certainly mastered that way of being. 
The path of mastery, however, isn't about the high we feel after a motivational seminar or one great meditation. It's about showing up, practicing, mastering something we care about as we diligently, patiently, and persistently show up for the sake of the practice itself. So how are you doing on that front? Do you get really into something for a week or two or three and then kind of fade? Well, that's not going to get us very far. That's the whole point of Leonard's brilliant little book. Let's look at the next big idea, endless climaxes. So a path of mastery involves plateaus, often long ones, where nothing appears to be improving and, in fact, can be pretty boring in a lot of ways. You see a lot of that reality portrayed in sitcoms or soaps or in commercials or in the movies? Hmm, not so much. Leonard says, quote, In all of this, the specific content isn't nearly as destructive to mastery as is the rhythm. One epiphany follows another. One fantasy is crowded out by the next. Climax is piled upon climax. There's no plateau. End quote. As Leonard points out, we're bombarded with images of endless climaxes. After a second and a half of work, it's Miller time. He advises, quote, If you're planning to embark on a master's journey, you might find yourself bucking current trends in American life. Our hyped-up consumerist society is engaged, in fact, in an all-out war on mastery, end quote. So let's take a closer look at how we can deal with that challenge. The next big idea is loving the plateau. Quote, goals and contingencies, as I've said, are important, but they exist in the future and the past beyond the pale of the sensory realm. Practice, the path of mastery, exists only in the present. You can see it, hear it, smell it, feel it. To love the plateau is to love the eternal now, to enjoy the inevitable spurts of progress and the fruits of accomplishment, then serenely to accept the new plateau that waits just beyond them. To love the plateau is to love what is most essential and enduring in your life. End quote. Ah, the process. Leonard beautifully captures his own process of discovering joy in the plateaus of his Aikido practice. The moment when he found himself thinking, quote, oh boy, another plateau. Good, I can just stay on it and keep practicing. Sooner or later, there'll be another spurt. It was one of the warmest moments on my journey, he says. How about you? Have you ever experienced a time where you just felt in love with the process of becoming? Again, goals and forward-looking gains are an important part of the process. But to achieve mastery, we must learn to love the plateaus. Those times when we may or may not be seeing external reward, but when we can revel in the subtler joy of doing our best moment to moment to moment. Let's love the process. And in the long run, success will follow us precisely because we had forgotten to think about it. The next big idea, practice as a noun. Quote, a practice as a noun can be anything you practice on a regular basis as an integral part of your life, not in order to gain something else, but for its own sake. For a master, the rewards gained along the way are fine, but they are not the main reason for the journey. Ultimately, the master and the master's path are one. And if the traveler is fortunate, that is, if the path is complex and profound enough, the destination is two miles farther away for every mile he or she travels, end quote. What an amazing thought. So do you really practice anything, let alone have a practice? If we intend to be a master of our lives in our self-development, our intimate and professional relationships, our work, our hobbies, we need to practice the skills inherent to mastering that subject and make that practice a practice. Practice as a noun. It's a really powerful concept. So can you make your self-development a practice? Create rituals around your meditation or journaling or reading or exercising so that it's not a when-I-can-squeeze-it-in kind of thing, but a fundamental part of who you are, a practice you honor on your path to mastery. How about your relationships? Are you practicing how to be a better partner to your significant other or consciously developing your relationship skills for a future partner if you're not currently in a relationship? Knowing how important appreciation is to the strength of a relationship, do you practice giving appreciation in your life? Have you made this a practice? 
see my notes on uh, Gay and Katie Hendricks for more on conscious living and loving practice ideas, by the way. And how about your hobbies? Do you dabble or obsess or hack here as well? How can you create a true path to mastery in your golf game, or whatever hobby you love to do? By not just practicing more regularly, but making the entire endeavor a practice. What about simple things like washing the dishes or walking down the street? Can you make these mundane acts part of a bigger practice of living with grace, full breath, and presence? As they say, how you do anything is how you do everything. How do you do anything? All right, moving on to the next big idea, surrender. Quote, the courage of a master is measured by his or her willingness to surrender, end quote. Reminds me of one of my favorite thoughts from Seneca's Letters from a Stoic. Seneca says, you can only acquire it successfully if you cease to feel any sense of shame. And you cannot, I repeat, successfully acquire it and preserve your modesty at the same time. So how do we possibly expect to learn something new if we aren't willing to look like an idiot for a while? One word, impossible. So we need to get over ourselves, surrender, and have fun falling on our butts. We shouldn't be taking ourselves so seriously anyway, right? All right, so how about you? Is there something you've been holding back on out of fear of looking foolish? Might now be a good time to swallow your pride and go for it? Surrender. Go for it. Have some fun. And remember the next big idea, intentionality. Quote, it joins old words with new, character, willpower, attitude, imagining, the mental game. But what I'm calling intentionality, however you look at it, is an essential to take along on the master's journey. End quote. Intentionality. It's one of Leonard's keys to mastery. Do you have a clear vision of your ideal and do you appreciate the power of visualization? Uh, Leonard quotes Arnold Schwarzenegger, who says, All I know is that the first step is to create the vision. Because when you see the vision there, the beautiful vision, that creates the want power. For example, my wanting to be Mr. Universe came about because I saw myself so clearly being up there on stage and winning. Works for me. How about you? What is your intentionality? And as you create that, think about homeostasis. You know that thermostat you have in the house? It keeps the temperature within a set range, bringing you back to the homeostatic point you've selected. Well, Leonard makes the point that over a lifetime of certain habits, we've created our own little homeostasis in our lives. And when we change, even for the better, we're going to feel a natural tug back to how things were. Totally true, right? As they say, the bulk of the fuel used in a trip to space is in the liftoff phase, when the rocket needs to escape the gravitational pull. Same thing here. So here are some tips from Leonard on how to deal with the inevitable tug back. One, and I quote, be aware of the way homeostasis works. Don't panic or give up at the first sign of trouble. Number two, be willing to negotiate with your resistance to change. The fine art of playing the edge in this case involves a willingness to take one step back for every two forward sometimes vice versa. And three, these are all direct quotes from Leonard, develop a support system. Four, follow a regular practice. And five, dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. All right, now as you do that, recognize the next big idea. There will be pitfalls on the path. Quote, it's easy to get on the path of mastery. The real challenge lies in staying on it. End quote. How true is that? How many times have you started a new program and then burnt out and or switched course? A lot? Yeah, me too. Leonard points out some pitfalls. My personal favorite, I quote, obsessive goal orientation. As pointed out numerous times in this book, the desire of most people for quick, sure, and highly visible results is perhaps the deadliest enemy of mastery, end quote. So we've discussed this one before, but I'm putting it here as a friendly reminder. Are you focusing too much on your goals and not enough on your consistent action? Don't forget Russell Simmons' wisdom. He says, I know some people say, keep your eyes on the prize. But I disagree, he says. When your eyes are stuck on the prize, you're going to keep stumbling and crashing into things. 
If you really want to get ahead, you've got to keep your eyes focused on the path. Another pitfall on the path, laziness. Leonard defines it as disinclined to action or exertion, averse to labor, indolent, idle, slothful. We know when we're being lazy. As Leonard says, practicing mastery is the absolute best solution to the problem. My experience, just do what you say you're going to do to yourself and to others again and again and again. And while we do that, the next big idea, mastering the commonplace. Quote, could all of us reclaim lost hours of our lives by making everything, the commonplace along with the extraordinary, a part of our practice? End quote. I love this idea. Why not make every moment an opportunity to express our mastery? Whether you're driving to work or washing the dishes or doing any number of mundane tasks, why not take advantage of the opportunity to practice bringing your best to the moment? And the next big idea, getting energy for mastery. Quote, a human being is the kind of machine that wears out from lack of use. There are limits, of course, and we do need healthful rest and relaxation, but for the most part, we gain energy by using energy. It might well be that all of us possess enormous stores of potential energy, more than we could ever hope to use, end quote. That's beautiful. How about you? Are you playing full out? How can you step it up a notch or two? Leonard offers a variety of tips to get energy for mastery. Here are some of my favorites. Set priorities and make decisions. He says, quote, indecision leads to inaction, which leads to low energy, depression, despair, end quote. So what have you been putting off making a decision on? Make the decision. Get clear on what you're going to do and do it. Next idea, take action. As an Aikido master, Leonard says, quote, it's instructive to watch the immediate surge of clarity and energy during training that comes from the simplest act of writing one's name on a notice, end quote. I love that. So what notice do you need to write your name on? A 10K you're going to run, a marathon you're going to do, a triathlon? What notice do you need to write your name on? Think about the next idea. Get on the path of mastery and stay on it. This is perhaps the surest way to fuel your energy. As Leonard advises, quote, much of the world's depression and discontent can ultimately be traced to our unused energy, our untapped potential, end quote. Wow. So how about you? How can you tap more of your potential today? As we set off on our path of mastery and practice developing our practice as a noun, let us remember the wisdom of Fritz Perls, the founder of Gestalt Therapy, who says, I don't want to be saved. I want to be spent. So how will you choose to spend your precious energy, my friend? I trust it will be in pursuit of mastery and leave you with a thought from George Bernard Shaw, who says, this is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch, which I have a hold of for the moment, and I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it over to future generations. It's brilliant. That's George Bernard Shaw. That concludes the uh, philosopher's note on mastery. We'll now look at the little information on the biography of George Leonard, uh, as well as some other notes I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one, and some other quotes by George Leonard that were shared in the sidebar of the PDF. So George Leonard, the author of Mastery, is the author of numerous books on human possibility and social change including Education and Ecstasy, The Transformation, The Ultimate Athlete, The Silent Pulse, Adventures in Monogamy, and The Way of Aikido. He is the president of the Esalen Institute and founder of Leonard Energy Training, a practice inspired by Aikido. Mr. Leonard lives in Northern California. That's from the book. If you enjoyed this book, I think that you'd really enjoy Man's Search for Meaning, Do You, Ralph Waldo Emerson, 
The Spiritual Laws of Success, and The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And some quotes from the sidebar. George Leonard says, At the heart of it, mastery is practice. Mastery is staying on the path. Perhaps the best you can hope for on the master's journey, whether your art be management or marriage, badminton or ballet, is to cultivate the mind and heart from the beginning and at every stage along the way. For the master, surrender means there are no experts. There are only learners. And Leonard says, Consistency of practice is the mark of the master. And William James says, Most people never run far enough on their first wind to find out they've got a second. Give your dreams all you've got, and you'll be amazed at the energy that comes out of you. And finally, George Leonard shares, But the real juice of life, whether it be sweet or bitter, is to be found not nearly so much in the products of our efforts as in the process of living itself, in how it feels to be alive. Well, that's beautiful. So I will leave you on that note. Whatever the juice of life you're tasting right now, be it sweet or bitter, enjoy it. Immerse yourself in the beauty that is our lives as we grow more and more in our path of mastery. Have a wonderful day, and I'll look forward to sharing more with you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.